about the Jagodorian University in Krakow, Poland, who will talk about quantum entanglement and its geometry. So please. Thank you very much. Gracias por la invitación. I'm very, very pleased to be here and I'm privileged to deliver a talk in such a great aula magnum. Uh, indeed, I am guest of uh, Institute of the Ciencias Nucleares, even though uh, I, have, I have a lot of colleagues working in nuclear physics, but I'm mostly interested in quantum theory, which I hope will be of general interest for all of you. So I enjoy um, Mexico and UNAM very, very much. First day after I arrived, I saw Puma bus with Puma. I was very much well impressed by it, but I could not imagine that the next day I was shown the Puma life here. And I just sent it to uh, my family, so my daughter said, oh, it's very good I to think to study here with such a Pumas around. Yeah. So, the subject of my talk is very simple, some quantum mechanics for beginners. Basically, well, uh, simple as possible, Set up is we talk in our jargon about quantum bits. What is a qubit? You know the word, of course, very well. First, we start with a bit. Bit corresponds to binary unit. N is equal to 2. Something is equal to 2. N is for us the size of the Hilbert space. The simplest non trivial Hilbert space is of size 2. And Q is just quantum bit. So, quantum binary unit. So, we discuss all states. What states? Pure states are just elements of complex Hilbert space. And we normalize them and we assume that we consider equivalent classes, so the overall phase is not important. And that's easy to show. If you choose a basis like zero and one, here is one state, here another, then set of all pure states of the qubit forms a famous sphere we to call Bloch sphere. By the way, now I'm happy because Bloch of course, related to nuclear physics, so we can show this kind of relation of Bloch physics and nuclear physics. So the name Bloch Ball or Bloch Sweet comes from, I think, Fermi's, where he was making experiments in nuclear physics. So now, if I put those complex coefficients, I prefer to use here cosine theta over 2 and here e to i phi, because if I use those two angles here, the word geometry, I use my title, I can take literally. Why? With those variables, the set of pure states corresponds to what? So instead, geo is terrorized to the earth. So the geographic, those two numbers are just in geography called latitude and longitude. So of course, uh, here is a pole, here is equator, so Mexico is somewhere here, Poland is there. And for any point at the sphere, so the earth, we can find corresponding quantum state. And classical states are just those zero and one, up or down. So I have a Mexican coin I will use. So there are heads or tails. Well, there are no heads here. Yeah? What's here? What is this? It's not, is it how you say it in Spanish? So head or tails, one or zero, there are two classical states. Quantum mechanically, we change. We embed the space of classical states into entire block sphere. And the key feature, key quantum feature, is just the states which are in superposition. It's called quantum superposition or coherent superposition, not a mixture between two states. And they form our block sphere. For instance, key states are just those plus or minus. They are opposite, orthogonal. They are just superposition with arbitrary phase. Here is plus and here minus. Well, in physics we are not only interested in describing how the things look like, but how they change in time. We are interested in evolution. Simplest possible evolution of a ball, well, you can guess, is just rotation. This is like a block ball. It can rotate. So for us, a state in the standard picture, there's a unitary rotation. So you, we take a, a state, and we, uh, for any state psi, we, psi prime is u acting on psi. U is a unitary matrix which describes a rotation of the block ball, block sphere, and we get the transform psi. To discuss 
distance between two states, well, I mentioned already analogy to geography. In geography, the distance between Krakow and Mexico City, usually we consider geodesic distance at the sphere. So in the space of states, we can use a similar notion. Mm, for any two states, we can continue compute its so-called open absolute values of this open because they are complex numbers. And the arc cosine of this number, it is sometimes called Fubini star distance. Technically, those states are elements of complex projective space. We don't need to care too much about it. This is complex projective space. And then, mathematically speaking, there's a natural distance, Fubini study, which for n equal 2 corresponds just to standard geodesic distance from Mexico to Krakow at this field. Now, the key observation is that if we take two states and transform both of them, so it's a rotation, the distance does not change. Why? Because overlap or square or overlap does not change if both states are transformed unitarily. Because you see here, here is you, here you dagger, so this compass and the standard evolution can be considered as isometry. It's only a rotation. So the distance between two states, if they evolve in time, does not change. But there is a well-defined field, so-called quantum chaos. It means you have a classically chaotic system where two trajectories diverge in time, and you look for the corresponding quantum systems. So you might think, well, something is strange, because classically, of course, easy to see, there are two points which diverge in time exponentially fast. And then I told you that, well, for the quantum states in the standard evolution, it's a relation, so the distance does not change. So people study this problem for a long, long time, and there's a quite a field of quantum chaotology. So in a sense, the key point, n is side of the Hilbert space. If you go with n to infinity, you can consider it's like a classical limit, and the key observation is that there's two limits, time to infinity in the evolution, and n to infinity, so classical limit do not commute. This is just kind of an argument why there is kind of no contradiction between relation to chaotic, classically chaotic dynamics. Now, the question, what can you see? You can see two gentlemen, what they are doing? Possibly talking. More the delicate in the issue, what they are talking about. Of course, you cannot guess. I will tell you, they are talking mathematics. Maybe not physics, but mathematics. Well, maybe you know the names. Nikodem, there is Nikodem derivative. Otto Nikodem and Stefan Banach, I guess you know the name. They met once upon a time in Krakow, city I was born, and they were talking at the bench at the planting garden in summer 1916. I will refer to this story later. As you can guess, maybe some of you know, in Poland, Europe, it was not a very good time. It was just the middle of the First World War, 1916. So I will uh, go to this story later. Now, let me tell you something about mixed quantum states. Before we discuss pure states, pure elements of the Hilbert space. Now, I can discuss not only pure state, this is a pure state, but now take a projector onto pure state. Let me remind you, this is our slang cat, this is bra, uh, this cat bra is already in matrix, it's an operator. It's a projection operator onto a state. So now we can have a convex combination of those projectors, we call it mixed state. Mixed here is a mixture, so A, I are just arbitrary mixture conditions, they are non-negative and they sum to unity. Therefore, we use the name mixed state. Sometimes we also work with the use the name quantum state, mixed state, or density matrix. What are the density matrix? Of course, I you know, but I will just recall. So, we have, we fix the side of the Hilbert space, and this operator, so this density operator, which acts in this complex Hilbert space, we assume this Hermitian operator, self-joint, is positively defined and trace is equal to one. So there is a normalization which reflects the fact that the probability is constant. Sum over all probabilities is equal to one. And now let me denote by MN the set of all those states of a given size. For n equal two, the situation is simple. Set of pure states, it was a sphere. Set of mixed states is just all possible con combination. If you take a point at the sphere and take all possible convex combinations, what can you get? This is simple. You get the full ball. 
instead of a hollow sphere, you get pool ball. So not only in geographic terms, maybe it's related, related not only to geography, but geology. Because uh, everything inside is also interesting. For geology, of course, this what is inside the elephant is also important. So you see, the difference between pure state and mixed state is like the relation between geography and geology, in some sense. But look, this is simple for n equal to, for a qubit. In general, it's more complicated. In mathematical terms, you can say that a set of positive matrices from a cone. It's a cone, uh, well, but cone in the larger dimensional space. And now, trace equal to one, this position condition, this is like a hyperplane, this blue hyperplane. So our set of states is a kind of cross-section of this cone, which goes to infinity, with this plane, and therefore it's a finite dimensional body. Body means convex set, the set is convex, and it has a finite blue. So look, for n equal to, we know how the set of mixed states looks like. It's an interior of the spheres of a ball. Now the question comes, how the set of all states of size, for instance, three, in the second case, looks like? Well, it's a bit more complicated. First of all, first claim is, okay, I was not able to take it with Mexico. I like to take different gadgets with me. Why I was not possible to take it to Mexico? Not because of custom officers at the border, but because, this, because of what? The set is eight-dimensional, so I cannot bring it with me. The set lives in eight dimensions. Why eight? Who knows? n squared minus 1. We have a number of size n, n squared of 3 is 9 minus 1 because of trace. Preserving condition is 8. So this is the 8 dimensional set. In what? I don't know how it looks like. In 8 dimensions, well, we used to work on it for many years. Honestly, I still do not know how it looks like. But, well, we worked somehow on it and we wish to know how the set looks like. What is geometry of this set? First, we need a bit special set because it's pure state, so extremal points form only four dimensional set of pure states. This is complex projective manifold CP2 I discussed before. And boundary of this eight dimensional object has seven dimensions. Well, so the question is, in a sense, how does the eight dimensional object look like? Since I cannot tell you how it looks like, I can use so called apophatic approach. It means I can show you how it does not look like. Apophatic means kind by contradiction. This is easier to, uh, to work with. So, in the apophatic approach, first question is, I will show you some objects and ask you why they work in the apophatic approach. So, why there are examples, how I said, does not look like. For instance, uh, why this is not a good model set of mixed states? Yes, yes, exactly. This is not a convex set. So, I just went to the as my kids, went, I went to their room and I took some objects. So this is exactly this. So of course, it's a nice example of a non-convex set, yes? So it's not, our set is not like this. What comes next? Okay, this is, well, we know that for n equal 2, it is a ball. But for n equal 3, it is not a ball. It's not an 8 ball. This is simple. Mm, what else? Okay, so here is something different. What is this? Whatever, but this is a poly, not polygon, polyhedra or polygon. This is also a T, uh, it is a polytope. We know it's not a polytope, but it's more complicated. It has some flat parts and some parts. It's not, neither a ball nor a polytope. What then? Look, this is a better model. It's just a cylinder. It has some round parts and some flat parts. Yes? So now, a more sophisticated question. Again, what is in apophatic approach a model which our set, what is the property missing here? So to make this answer easier, so you know what I'm talking about. This is some object and I wish to know what is a model how our set does not look like. So to make it easier, I, you see colors here. So what is color? This is the set of in the case of cylinder, what are extreme points? One ring here, circle, one circle there. If you take convex hull of two, those two rings, you have the entire cylinder. Yes? So now, you, how do you think what is missing in this object? 
Yes, very well. Good answer. Yes, five points. Yes. So I will repeat. The, what is missing? The set of pure states should be connected. But I can cure it. Look. Now it's better. So what I did? I did this. Now I somehow repaired this um, missing part. Now you see the set of all pure states. So those extremal points is connected. Please show it. Please pass it over. So, and by the way, this object, how, now, what is the relation to, I don't know, tennis or maybe here, pos uh, more popular baseball? Yes. What do you play in baseball? Soccer. No, no, no. I don't go. I will only, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I only need such an object with uh, this shape. So, how, what is the relation to this tennis ball? Of this? How do you think? Let's imagine you got the ball, tennis ball, made out of gold, like El Dorado, and you are allowed to cut as much as you wish with a knife, huge knife, but you are not allowed to touch the seam. So you have to cut something away. By the way, how do you think, how many, how much, what is the percentage of the volume you are allowed to take out of this ball, not touching the seam? This is the answer, almost half of it. Sorry, this goes this direction. Ah. Here. You, this is the sphere, and here is a convex hull. It's almost convex hull of the seam of the tennis ball. Almost half of this is taken away. This is convex hull of the seam. And this is more or less this object you see. So, in a sense, this is a bit. Okay. I don't know how this set looks like. I don't know what it does not look like. But in some sense, if this is a block, a great ball. I discussed a set of pure states, which is in some sense uniquely connected, and I take convex hull of it. And what you will get, taking convex hull, is this object, which is more or less this one I showed to you. Are you with me? This is to understand the geometry of the set of mixed states. Yes, now I will show you uh, one picture of the city, Krakow, Vistula River, and the Wawel Castle. So, by the way, uh, somebody asked me, my university is called Jagieloński, so there was a dynasty of kings living there many years ago. And this picture will be important shortly. Now, look, I first admitted I do not know how this set looks like, because it's eight-dimensional. For larger n, it's even more, n square dimension. In apophatic approach, I try to show you how it does not look like. But if you don't like this approach, I will then try to advocate more constructive approach. For instance, there is a huge set of huge dimensionality, eight for instance. So what can I do with this eight dimensional set? I can study, for instance, cross sections or projections. So you can imagine, there is eight dimensional object, which I cannot bring here, and I can look into cross section in two or three dimensions. Yes, this is just to get some orientation how it looks like. And then I will also sometimes be useful to distinguish some separable states, and I can also we'll later on discuss some entangled states, can also look at the projections of those sets onto a plate. Well, and then I will need a simple mathematical notion, which is anyway, known for 100 years, and we know it implicitly, but not explicitly. Here, for any operator A, so matrix for one defines numerical range, sometimes called field of values, and noted often with letter W, because of Werther for the letter of Dutch. And so it was uh, the key results by Hausdorff templates, I think, 100 years ago. And the definition is simple. For an operator, you take normalized states, and you look at the expectation values among any pure states. So for us, it's a very simple note. We take all possible expectation values of an operator in any normalized state. Now look, if the matrix is Hermitian, so A is equal to A, uh, a joint, so we know very well that the spectrum of such a point is real, you can order it from lambda 1 to lambda, let's say, n, in this case lambda 4, and it's easy to show that this numerical range, it is just a set from the smallest to the largest eigenvalue. So it range, a segment of the Line therefore the name, range, it is numerical range. So this is because the operator is Hermitian. 
In general, for non Hermitian operators, the spherical range forms a set at the complex plane. And then I mentioned already those German uh, scientists, mathematicians. There is a very famous theory, House of Interpolates. By the way, it was proven some uh, exactly 100 years ago, in 1919, and there will be a huge mathematical conference on these topics to commemorate uh, this theorem. And the theorem, this theorem says that for any A, this is a convex set on the complex plane. Well, more or less look like this. There are examples for random matrices of order 6 and the red dots, the eigenvalues. So this set, of course, includes all eigenvalues. In the generic case for a non-normal operator, non hermitian of course, you have such a nice smooth boundary. And in the case of a normal operator, normal it is such that it commutes with its adjoint. There is a nice theorem which tells that this numerical range is just convex hull of the spectrum. You here see eigenvalues, so it's a polygon. Now look, this is simple, so this is not mathematics for 100 years. So two points. First, this could be of interest to us, because they are the expectation values we use every, almost every day in quantum theory. And second, to be related to our set of mixed states. For instance, if you, some examples, if you take n equal to non Hermitian matrix with respect to two complex numbers, lambda 1, lambda 2, then, so it's a normal matrix, then this numerical range is just a segment from lambda 1 to lambda 2. If you have matrix of size 3 with three eigenvalues, 1, 2, 3, numerical range, the set of all possible expectation values is just a triangle. Convex hull of three points is triangle. Well, if you take not normal matrix, for instance, if you take a non-normal matrix of size 2, then a theorem which is also like 80 years old tells that for any matrix of size 2, this numerical range is an elliptical disk with two eigenvalues placed at the focal point of this ellipse. For instance, if you take this Jordan matrix like very nice, not normal matrix, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. You see eigenvalues are zeros and zeros. Yes, you know, there are eigenvalues equal to zeros, and this ellipse has special shape, so a circle, full circle. Then numerical range of this ellipse is disk. It's disk, centered at zero, r is one half. But now look, I, what would be the relation to physics? I told you, this is easy to believe, that the set of all mixed set of size 2 is just a ball. So, how do you think? Is there any relation between this ball here and this uh, ellipse or disk uh, found by mathematicians many years ago? Well, look, unfortunately, what can I do? I'm not high enough. No, I will do an experiment. Ah, ah, ah yes. What have you seen? You have a, a shadow. You have a scene. Let's try again. Ah, oh, okay. You can see a shadow ball. Uh, usually, if there's a small room, I can put uh, my ball on the um, beam of light. And then, of course, shadow you will see will be a disk. But if you tilt the screen, it could also be an ellipse. And this is the point. numerical uh, ranges I mentioned is just a full circle or an ellipse. I will return to this point later. Here is again a picture of Ravel Castle in Krakow. So this is Vistula River. First picture was done from this place. Now I show you another picture. Look, just to formulate a mathematical theorem. This is a theorem of my friends that I of Tichels. You see here a red Arrow. So the theorem goes like this. With probability 1 minus epsilon, the bench of Banach talked to Nicodem in 1916 was localized in eta neighborhood of this red arrow. As I guess, they, still, they are mathematicians. They still work how to relate epsilon with eta. We don't know what is the relation between those two numbers. Uh, look, it was like this. A short, a long story short, Banach 
was during the First World War, was out of the studies because his Lemberg, which was taken by Russia, had nothing better to do. He was living in Canada, but not doing science, but he talked to Nikodim, which was his friend. And they talked sitting at the bench, and then they talked about strange things, about Lebeck Integral, which it was in 1916, and Lebeck Integral was invented in 1905 by Lebeck in France. And then Heinhaus was already PhD in mathematics, he was a professional mathematician, he was passing by, and could, he was very much amazed, he could not help over here, that some two young guys are talking about Integral during the war very close to the front. He was very much amazed, and he introduced himself and joined the discussion, and basically the, the key moment starting somehow later developed public school of mathematics. Later, Steinhaus got a position in Lwów, and he somehow managed to help but to get his position. So Steinhaus himself had a lot of nice mathematical but if later on he wrote in his memoirs, if somebody asked him what his, is his greatest mathematical achievement or discovery, his answer was very short, Banach, Banach himself. So he realized, that because Banach, uh, he got out of the studies, he, was not, he, he has never got a master uh, degree, then he got a PhD degree, but because of Steinhaus, who was his kind of mentor, he eventually got a professional position and in some sense invented entire functional analysis and became a well-known professor in late 20s. So, exactly 100 years later, after this discussion, there was a bench erected in Krakow. If you ever uh, be at this, go and see. There's a Polish long uh, story. I will a shorter one in English. Otto Bodem here and Stefan Banach in conversation about mathematics. This bench uh, memorizes the famous meeting with Hugo Steinhaus in the Plantic Garden in summer 16. Now we say, well, but we are physicists. Why should we care? Of course, we like bad faces and so on. There is one more point, maybe not so well known. This was in 1916. Then, but, you know, he almost survived the war, so he uh, passed away. He was doing the war. He passed away in 46. Uh, yes, and he never returned to Poland. But um, Otto Nikodym survived the war. He went to uh, U.S. and he uh, continued his mathematical career. But later, he wrote an interesting book in 1966. Fifty years later, he wrote a book, Mathematical Apparatus for Quantum Theories. So in a sense, quantum mechanics is also somehow in our field related to this. Uh, so therefore, I told you this story. Well, now I show you some images of some shadows. If you see some object, you can look, what is its shadow? For instance, this is a ball. Here you have a shadow. Here is like a tetrahedron. Yeah, here it is. So you can look for what is its shadow. And from the shadows, if you rotate your object, if you have more and more pictures like this, you can somehow guess how the object looks like. Yes. By the way, this is related, how it is related to our story. There is this famous idea of tomography, which basically it is this, and this tomography is related to, to, what, to some, there is some Nicodem integral Nicodem. So there are some relations to the theorem by Otto Nicodem. It's, it's called Nicodem. Okay. Uh, uh, well, there, are, there is a deep mathematics inside. However, we wish to understand what is the geometry of the set in many dimensions. And we only look at its, um, at its projections. So, our key observation is the following. What is now the relation between the set of mixed states, like ball, and those numerical ranges? This is the point. If you take first the set of classical states, like probability vectors for n equal four is just a tetrahedron, and this is the set of all classical states, and consider orthogonal projections onto a plane, so you look at the shadows of tetrahedron at the plane, what you get, you get a polygon. And this is the set of possible projections of the set of classical states on the plane is equivalent up to uh, a fine transformation to the numer all possible numerical ranges of all normal matrices of a given size. 
and now you take to uh, go to quantum states, there is a similar statement that if you fix dimension, for instance, two, the set of quantum states, the ball, then the set of all possible projections of this set onto a plane is up to a fine transformation equivalent to all possible shapes of numerical ranges of all matrices of a given size. So, for n equal to, all possible numerical ranges form an ellipse, Why? because the shadow of a block ball is an ellipse. So, what it means? That if we study numerical ranges, we can see what are the projections of this huge dimensional object onto the plane. So, here are some examples of ties. This is the generic case. Here you see there's one flat part, two flat parts, and three flat parts. This is the polygon, which is corresponds to normal matrix, and they are more classified. Now, you can also have the idea to take not two expectation values, but three expectation values. So, you take three different operators, let's assume they are Hermitian. Physically, we make a triple measurement. We take, measure three variables, A1, A2, A3. And we look at all possible sets of the joint results of joint measurement. And this is, mathematically speaking, joint numerical range. If there are three variables, you get objects in 3D. The objects basically look looks like this. So there should be a model of this here. So please have a look. This, you know, there's a 3D printer which you can use for very many different purposes. For instance, to print such objects like this. Um, this is my student who was responsible for producing it, and he knows how to do it. So what you need for such an object, you need a 3D printer, a software, and a clever student. This is enough. So I was very lucky that I had three of those. Um, and look, in some sense, now we go to a, well, even philosophy. You know perhaps, or you will know, uh, about the cave of Plato. He somehow this, had such idea, maybe this is what we see, it's not our real world, but we only see shadows of something which happens somewhere. So in our sense, those objects I show you, they are projections of this set of quantum states which live in many dimensional space, so we don't know how they look like. But like uh, in the story of Plato, we can only look at the shadows of their shadows and the two plane or the plane. So here are some examples of all those possible uh, three-dimensional objects. So here we took three-dimensional projections of set of mixed states of size 8. Or in other words, we took three Hermitian matrices of size 3 and looked at those objects and classified them. So we understand a little bit. Okay, in apophatic approach, I can tell you how the state does not look like. In a constructive approach, I can tell you well. I don't know exactly how it looks like in eight dimensions, but a lot, lot how its projections onto a two-plane or three-plane look like. Okay. Perhaps you are tired. You are in the physics department, and I'm talking about such strange things like operators and numerical ranges, so you can be bored and can ask a question, where is the physics? Why do you care about it? So a question, what is physics? I'm sure you have a good answer to it if you talk to your students. I'll show you a ball, and if you kick a ball, what we know, the ball will stop at some point, even if you kick the hard. If you buy an ice cream, what, it will happen, what will happen? Ice cream will melt if you don't eat them on time. And then, if you create an entire state and do nothing, similar situation, it will decohere you to a separable state. Like, ice cream will melt because of thermodynamics, here because of friction, the ball will stop, and here because of inevitable contact with environment, entangled states will lose their quantum features, they will become classical states. So now, I promise you to tell something about entanglement. What is entanglement? First of all, we'll discuss quantum mechanics for composite systems. Composite systems, we describe Hilbert space, which has the structure A, A tensor HB. This is a strange sign of the tensor product. 
But practically, physically, we say we have two objects, like A and B. So separable state, this is the pure state, is any state of this product form. And entangled states are those which are not of this form. For instance, the very famous Bell state, we say it's like 0, 0, plus 1, 1, it has two terms. So this part has this form, the product state. 0, 0 means, well, let me write, just to convention, it's like this, 0, 0 is equal to, okay, sometimes I write here comma, it is sometimes 0, A, tensor, 0, B, which basically means I have two objects, like this object and this object, and the separable states is like variables which are not correlated, independent. So one object is here, one is there, they do not talk together. Well, I have here two Mexican coins. I have never played with Mexican coins, I don't know how they behave. But let's do, I do the following experiment. So of course, we know what is heads or tails, Let's assume they are fair coins. I hope in Mexico you have fair coins. So probability to get uh, heads is 50%. Oops. So, well, let's imagine I throw it, but it goes some time. So it's better for you to make this. Okay, so I have one coin which is still in the motion. And I have another one. And let's assume make such an experiment. Two coins are still in movement. And now I claim. I make move like this. And I tell you, well, every time I got here one, I will say, I will also get one here. Will you believe me? Is it possible? Mathematically, well, physically you will say, no, I must be cheating. You will check that two coins, whether they are fair coins. How come it's possible that there is a relation between the outcome of measurement here and there? Of course, you will say it's not possible, yes. In some sense, it's not possible. However, what is the key point? The key point is that in physics, okay, in a sense there is a philosophical question why we cannot, describing small objects, we cannot predict outcome of a measurement deterministic. We can only do something probabilistic with certain probability. Here, we have a bipartite system and we can describe this system in the large Hilbert space. So in a sense, we treat those two objects still like a single object. So in this way, this separable state is equally good state from the mathematical perspective, as this bell state. This bell state only means that there are two objects which interacted in the past and they still have strong correlation. So it's not like this, that there's something special, that uh, there is kind of interaction at the long distance. No. All axioms of mathematical uh, physics are satisfied. We cannot influence the height of the measurement, but if this state is in the entangled state, there are correlations between outcomes of the And indeed, making a measurement here, I can get what will be the outcome of the measurement there, provided the state is still in this entangled state. Which is usually not the case, because this entanglement, unfortunately, suffers the coherence and the state, quantum state, gets back to the classical case. To characterize the case of entanglement, you well, can use many different ideas, but the simplest one is to take this projector onto the state we analyze and com compute partial trace. It's called reduce density matrix. And now to check whether this matrix is mixed or pure. To do it, we define standards for Neumann entropy. So this is for Neumann entropy, minus trace, rho, log, rho, sigma, log, sigma. And this is a quantity which describes entanglement of the initially pure state. Because if the state is product, partial trace is still pure state, its entropy is zero. And for Bell state, partial trace is maximally mixed. We do not know nothing about partial trace, and the entropy is maximal. So in short, the more mixed the partial trace, reduced density matrix, the more entangled initial pure state. Well, here, well, our, this is just a kind of, again, cross-section of the, so you will know this already, of the space of two qubit pure state. So we define four basis states like 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And here you can see at this edge, you have a 0 here. So this is an edge which corresponds to separable states. 
Here also separate because it's zero at the front. However, here at this line, you have entanglement because you have zero one plus one zero. So superposition of those two states will be entangled. So the colors here denote entropy of entanglement. Blue means separable states and red means high entanglement, high entropy of entanglement. So there are two states here at this plot which are maximally entangled and you can see that in some sense the degree of entanglement corresponds to the distance to the set of separable states which is here uh, uh, is given those four edges. By the way, we like somehow this picture. So by the way, this picture was done just we took a picture of this object which already it has like 15 years so it's a bit not so new but you will see now we use this picture for the cover plot of the first uh, edition of our book I wrote with Ingemar Bengtsson sorry his name should be here so Ingemar Bengtsson is from Sweden and we invited to write the second edition and in the second edition the cover story this is such a strange object it's called Boromir and Wings because we discuss multi-party entanglement I will uh, go to this uh, later. So there are such a rings that if you cut one ring, the chain goes apart. Any one of them, if you uh, uh, dismantle, then you can see here, uh, then all others will go apart. Well, so for mixed state, it's more complicated. For mixed state, so um, density matrices, if they are defined on the bipartite system, Again, we discussed separable mixed states. They are convex combinations of product states. And an angled mixed state is any of both of this form. This definition is consistent with the previous one for pure states. Yes. Um, and then there's a question. This is a non-constructive definition. Because if you, I give you mixed states or a density matrix, it's difficult to guess whether such a form exists or not. So there's a key question which was posed some 20 years ago. How to find sufficient criteria to check whether such a, for a given state, such a form exists? So how to find whether a given state is separable or not? For the last 20 years, people know that those problems are already well understood in the simplest case, like 2 times 2, so 2 qubits, or 1 qubit and a qubit. But for higher dimensions, we know many, many partial results or the separability problem is still open. For two qubit system, there is very nice theory by Paris from Israel and the family of Horodetsky, Horodetsky family. So Horodetsky, pluralist in Polish of Horodetsky. They are son, uh, sorry, father and three sons. Together. So the criteria is the following. T is here at transposition and one tensor T is partial transposition. It means I have two objects and in one subspace I make a transposition I touch the other. It's innocent in mathematics on the blackboard, but you cannot realize it in the real world. However, on the blackboard, it, it could be done, and then the theorem says that I define this by partial transpose, T2, because I perform transposition on the second subsystem. And the statement is that for the qubit system, if this partially transposed matrix is positive, then the state is separable. In a sense, let this the, the set of all mixed states. Partial transposition is like a reflection. So this is partially transposed set. So set of so-called PPT, positive partial transpose, is just an uh, intersection of the initial set and its reflection. This is a very simple theorem which tells us that those states here are separate while those outside the set are entangled. But for, uh, for higher dimensions, this theorem works on the direction. we first discuss the simplest case of computing to show that the center of the body of mixed states, here I denote the tetrahedron spectra, so eigenvalues, four eigenvalues of density matrix phase four. There are four numbers which sum to unity, it's tetrahedron. And we show that if you have spectrum which is sufficiently close to the center of this tetrahedron, then the set is separate. In fact, entire maximally ball in the set of eigenvalues corresponds to a separable state. So this is like first result in this direction. 
Okay? And then here, the cross section of this uh, 15 now dimensional body, which is complicated again to guess. By the way, I want to understand first the structure of the set of full, then the set of the estimators, to be able then to understand better the properties of the set of separable states and entanglement states. Here, at this cross section, uh, this here is this maximal ball, those white is uh, separable state, here black is entangled, and the more black, the more entangled states, those two points corresponding to maximally entangled states. They are those states which were uh, bell states which were red here. And in a sense you see that the degree of entanglement can be interpreted as a, for any state here low, as a distance closer as distance to the boundary of the state. So here is a picture of Stefan Banach at his bench close to the Wabel Castle in Krakow. And the last part, I will tell you of this talk, I will tell you something about dynamics. We are not only interested about the set of mixed sets, the set is like a scene where some uh, action can be put in, but we really describe action, something is, uh, um, yes, something happens. So some, we allow for some dynamics. So, indeed, this dynamics is complicated. We don't know how to describe it very precisely and so simple. So, we made several approximations. Two approximations, so-called stroboscopic approach. So, you close your eyes, and then you open for a while, you make a picture, and so on. So, you have a discrete time. So, now you discuss a map which map the set of mixed states for any set into itself. So, time is discrete. And then, in physics, you can say, oh, you can take your state and extend it by environment, allow unitary matrix to uh, couple those two subsystems and take partial trace. So in this way, you have a non-unitarity. Or you can have this Krauss form in which there are uh, arbitrary number of Krauss operators written in this way to preserve the trace, those Krauss operators, AI, satisfy such an identity. Even though either of those is so you have kind of different expressions a way to represent such a map in this form or that form. So there are some models for dynamics, so I will not go too much into details, but for the simplest system, two times two is four, I have two qubits, so I have two spins somehow. I make some assumptions how they behave in time, and I study entanglement, how entanglement changes in time. As simple as that. So there is exactly written those. So it's called so-called channels. Fortunately, Carlos is here, so back home, he knows a lot about Charles Pauli channels, and David, they can answer all your questions, I hope. So this is a simple model, kind of Pauli channel, which is simple, and eventually what I show here, this is time dependence of entanglement. At the beginning, what you are thinking? Well, usually entanglement will decay. It is pretty so. You often observe such an exponential decay just because those channels describe interaction with environment and decays. It's not so interesting. However, sometimes it happens, we observe such a revivals of entanglement, we try to understand why it is so. It's even more interesting, you can observe such a thing. Entanglement gets uh, killed, for example, there's nothing, and then you observe again a revival. In the first scenario, later there was a paper, so we had a paper with Horodetsky family, 2001, there was a later paper by Yao and Eber, and they coined the name sudden death of entanglement. This is the case if entanglement dies immediately and stays there forever. But it's also possible it dies and it appears again. So at the beginning we were a bit confused some 20 years ago. We could not understand why it is so. Now we understand the situation a bit better. Now our geometric approach helps. Because now we understand that this is the picture, such a sketchy picture. We had already the idea that here is the set of all separable states. I showed you before such a cross-section, and there is dynamics. If you observe such a dynamics, it passes to the center, entanglement will die. Why? Because we go from the set of entangled states to the uh, gray set of separable and stay there forever. However, if you have such a rotations, you can have a revivals. But uh, this picture, so this was like artist plot. And this is the plot obtained with this numerical technique. So this is just a sketch, and this is really trajectory which you can put onto 
uh, numerical range and num numerical uh, of the, uh, this so-called separable numerical range in gray, which corresponds to the projection of the set of separable states. So now we can understand these dynamics with our tools much better. I think I have to speed up. So last remark, I want to mention that this um, Borromean rings are related to three parted states. For two qubits, everything is simple. By the way, we three is larger than two. In this field, three is much larger than two. In what else? For two qubits or two units, it's enough to use singular very composition of a matrix. And basically, we know everything. For three parties, we need to work with tensors, which is much more complicated. And therefore, everything becomes for multiple party systems. The entanglement is much, much, much more complicated. However, for the simplest case of multi-party entanglement is three qubits. I have three systems A, B, and C, and I distinguish GHZ state, which looks like this. 0, 0, 0, plus 1, 1. Very simple generalization of the so-called Bell state. And it has this unique uh, property that if you choose any subsystem and make partial trace with respect to both parties, the reduced matrix is proportional to identity. And other property is, if you make a measurement of one party, the remaining state will be separable. So therefore, this is related to Borromean rings. If you cut one ring, those two others will go apart. Which is not always the case. For other states like W, this is not the case. I think I should conclude. So our approach is useful for people working not only for quantum information, but also in the foundations of quantum theory. In quantum computing, well, there is such a picture I took from a paper of Gil Kalai, who shows here classical computing, and then the quantum computing expected, so such a mind um, far away, you are not sure you can see it, and then possibly there are some from one place to another uh, that you can really go through. But what is the key point? We have taken into account noise and environment. So now we are not sure whether there is really a bridge, so you can really fight with all those problems which make quantum Computing difficult, so from the mathematical theory to the real life, a certain way, whether such a bridge really exists, we'll see, I hope, soon. So, here are some concluding remarks. I think I will skip them. If you wish to talk to me, I'm here this afternoon and next week, on Friday. I'm very, very thankful for this invitation. But then I will show you again now. This is the bridge. You see Nikodem, Otto Nikod talking to Stefan Banach in summer 1916. This bench was erected and opened. Uh, exactly 100 years later after this discussion. If you ever come to Krakow, please do. Please come, sit here, and listen to what I have to say. Thank you very much. Yes. Very good question. So it's not correlated, it could mean this, but okay, I will go back quickly. In a sense, for pure states, entropy, uh, for Neumann entropy is zero, it becomes larger and larger if the state gets more and more mixed. But here there are two effects. Independently, it can go, trajectory can go to the center, so entropy increases, and then usually the entanglement goes down, However, if you have such a trajectory for which this entropy increases small, so the trajectory does not hit the center, it can go many times around. Unitary evolution is just rotating. So there are two competing effects. One the coherence at the state gets mixed and mixed entropy increases. So trajectory goes closer to the center. And second is the rotation. The trajectory can go many times through the set of separate states, so therefore you see each time you go into heat, the entire decreases, if it goes out, it revives again. So it may happen many, many times. Any other question? Uh, in this geometric picture of entanglement, what do entanglement witnesses look like? Okay, nice question. So, in a sense, if two qubits, the 
spales of all states is fifteen dimensional, and then distinguish subset of several states. dynamics in 15D so easy. So we look at to the projection. So this picture again is exactly kind of project. The trajectory goes here, the trajectory for a model I described before. It goes via the set of entangled states, separable here, gray, goes again outside, so there's a revival. And the next revival, and then goes here, so two revivals, and in a sense, with this picture, we can understand those effects which people somehow observed many years ago without deeper understanding. And it's easier for us to predict for a given trajectory uh, what scenario we'll find. Yes, uh, I, see, I understand the question. Well, <laughs> in a sense, this is relatively simple quantum mechanics. So basically, it's like algebra of matrix of size 4, 9, or 15. And what you are talking about is much more sophisticated and complicated. However, there is something in common. People use similar techniques and similar measures of entanglement. But it's not so much directly related. But the entanglement is the same, and the same idea, and similar rules. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it is somehow, yeah, yeah, yeah. So many papers are quoted in both fields together. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presence.